So, as we've learned, NORA is a very important tool for communication and um, for, in a way, revealing ourselves but also sensing our environment and protecting ourselves. But um, just like anything, it needs proper care. So, I will talk a little bit about things which influence our aura and how to take good care of our aura. Um, one of the most important things which we have to notice is that uh, we get into a certain uh, pattern. And if our aura is always more or less forced in the same pattern, it becomes very rigid. So if we're always in the city, then yeah, it becomes impossible for us to, to work on our own self-development or to uh, do things uh, spiritually very easily. And the opposite is also true if I spent years and years living alone on the top of a mountain I cannot really focus on work and quick responses and um, yeah all these low vibrations very easily so in order to have a kind of a full range of capabilities within your aura where it can do everything it is yeah meant to do it is good actually to, to exercise it to put it through its paces of spending a few days in the desert, spending a few days in the forest and then spending a few days in the city. And every time, of course, you will have to adapt. You will have to go through a period where the aura is you know, stretching or expanding or being contracted. But by doing this, you are also really creating a flexibility of your mind, of your spirit, of, uh, in a way, looking at things from very different perspectives, from the highest perspective to the most simple, lowest, most practical perspective. So it is really about, um, with a very small aura, what to do, how to focus, how to do it quickly, how do you feel about doing it, does it really match with you, with your goals, and how does it match within society, within higher goals, within your life path. So this gives you a complete perspective of everything you do, so you can see all aspects. Um, but yeah, if your aura is stuck in a certain position, then you're unable to see either the practical aspects or the, the higher aspects. And most people's auras tend to be very um, stuck in, in one specific state. Uh, we tend not to have very flexible aura, so some exercise there it, uh, is actually quite uh, would be quite good for them. Uh, there are also ways in which we can artificially flex our auras. Uh, the easiest way, in a way, to to make it larger is to overfeed it, to yeah, just like you're inflating a balloon, to stuff it with energy, so it has to become bigger to get a balance. Um, Way the, the size of the aura is in a way like the pressure within is the same as the pressure without. If there's a lot of pressure from the outside, lots of energies outside of you, lots of things happening, then it gets compressed until the inner pressure is the same. And if there's not a lot outside, your inner pressure will allow the aura to expand all the way into the desert and to make it bigger. So by for instance, feeding it by going on a ley line. A ley line is a place where the environmental energy is exceedingly strong. So you're, in a way, absorbing a lot of energy from your environment, so the aura gets a lot of energy which goes into it, and the aura is then yeah, expanding, expanding, expanding. And uh, on top of a ley line, actually the aura can expand way beyond just 20 meters, it can become hundreds of meters or kilometers even. So by going to uh, visit ley lines and especially a uh, place where ley lines cross, uh, such as many holy sites, the aura is being made bigger and bigger and you are more and more able to sense subtle energies and to get a higher perspective on things. So visiting holy sites um, places of initiation, uh, places of power can be a very interesting exercise for the aura and especially if you are not just visiting there but if you spend several days there uh, the effect can be quite profound on your consciousness. 
Um, the opposite uh, tends to happen quite naturally to people, namely the influence of metal. Uh, metal tends to, to, in a way, hold on or to condense energy into itself. It's like kind of like crystallizing energy and putting it into a very fixed pattern. Um, so shamans used to have little pieces of metal, which was, of course, quite rare to find in the wild. They would put these little nuggets on their yeah, shamanic robes uh, for if they needed to do battle with other shamans or with evil spirits. Because it would, in a way, act like armor for their aura. It would make their aura smaller, uh, more sturdy, more fixed, less flexible. And nowadays we tend to surround ourselves with metal, uh, metal furniture, metal wires in our home, uh, uh, metal uh, in the, the houses we construct, uh, metal cars we drive. So we tend to have, you could say, almost an overabundance of metal compared to our natural state. And all this metal, in a way, slows down energy reduces our energetic sensitivity so we're in a way our, aura are, our, our auras are constantly put in a state of warfare in how to be very focused on ourselves how to be completely individualized and resist and fight against the powers against us rather than learn to try to learn from them or understand them or feel them so by having all this metal around we're in a way also training our auras to go into a very combative state uh, but if you are indeed hypersensitive and your aura is picking up too much energies um, then you can use this metal to really um, work with it and to limit your own sensitivity and especially iron and um, uh, aluminium which have really low stabilizing uh, frequencies can really diminish your sensitivity or harm your sensitivity but even if you have like the higher metals like gold or silver uh, they will really slow down your reaction your response to energy so you will be much slower in picking up energies in sensing them in being able to move along with them and the same is true actually for having metal implanted in your body through piercings or through operations um, it is slowing down the movement of the energy, ultimately also slowing down the movement of life force in that area. So it tends to create a weak spot also in the aura. Uh, because on the short term, the condensation of energy helps because it makes the energy more compact. On the long term, because the energy cannot flow, it cannot renew itself and it weakens. Um, so you can get almost um, um, like a, a negative spiral. So you feel overwhelmed by things, so you surround yourself by more metal, by amulets, by rings, by whatever, and then you feel more strong, more stable. But if you wear all these rings and amulets and things continuously, then because of the lack of ability of energy to move, your you in a, way, in a way starving yourself because you cannot absorb energy as easily anymore and you become even more weak and vulnerable compared to these energies and then you get a negative spiral. So besides in a way hardening the aura it is often better to be able to cleanse the aura. Um, and the cleansing of the aura is roughly done in, in two ways. One is the letting go of, of energies which don't belong there because we're constantly picking up other people's emotions, other people's thoughts. And by in a way separating ourselves from this constant yeah, junk mail which our aura is receiving, we can yeah, in a way go out into nature and empty our spam box and all these influences can in a way disappear from our aura. They are generally recognized as spam and junk mail, but they still need to be flushed out of our, our cash. The other thing we need is the ability to transform our own experiences. We all experience things 
which can be um, good or bad and all these experiences tend to pile up unless we have the opportunity to deal with them so then we also would be ideally uh, in nature or having a lot of natural elements around us so our aura can be in a natural state of at least like yeah, six meters radius and then we have the flow and the depth of flow the ability to sense things physically emotionally and mentally with enough power with enough detail to relate all these experiences together to go into a process of transformation so if you meditate in such an environment you can also yeah, purify the aura by getting rid of all the experiences which have been piled have been piling up you will also often find if you do this for enough time but also the stress of the body will tend to diminish because all these things get in a way bumped down to uh, yeah the, a deeper and deeper vibration to force more and more attention well if you're not willing to think about it maybe then you need to feel it and get emotional about it maybe then you will react and if you're not even paying heed to your emotions ultimately something becomes a physical thing it will become a physical imbalance causing pain causing discomfort causing weakness so to force you to stop continuing what you're doing and pay attention to it so by in a way maintaining um, a relatively healthy equilibrium uh, processing the things which are happening to you um, incorporating the lessons and the insights which are occurring to you in life you can prevent yeah, emotional disturbances mental disturbances and also physical disturbances to yourself so a healthy aura is extremely important to your health on physical emotional and mental levels uh, so you really need to take the time to uh, to do that to go out into nature and to have the time to process things and you will find that also if you are out in nature it is much easier to have a good and healthy processing well if you're stuck in your city environment then the only thing which will work is mental processing and because the physical sensations and the emotional sensations will be much too repressed uh, because it's also about speed the mind reacts very very quickly so you can are more or less in an emergency system I need to react now if you see a tiger in the, in the forest you can't stop to think how you feel about it and what your emotions are you need to be up in the tree <laughs> or in back into the car as quickly as possible but to process things you need to experience yourself experience your own reactions on a physical level on an emotional level to get enough depth of experience because only these deep experiences are transformative to your spirit but all the things you do at your work the success you have in your career how good you are with your taxes and how clever your little ploys are they're not going to amount to anything on a spiritual level but if you've loved deeply, if you've sensed beauty, um, they will affect your spirit. So working with the aura is also about giving your spirit what it needs, what it wants. Because usually a healthy spirit will also give a lot of power to the aura. If the spirit is getting what it wants from life, from its environment, and it will also increase the ability of you to work with your environment to influence your environment and to get reactions from it and if your spirit feels that in a way its incarnation is being wasted then also the aura will weaken quite strongly um, so the same is true also if you're not following the path your spirit has set out for you if you're doing what your ego wants well that may lead to a lot of success in your career and in your love life and in all kinds of aspects but your aura will also suffer it will weaken because it needs the support of the spirit very much to generate it and if the 
spirit is not helping the body to generate the aura, if there's no real cooperation between the incarnated self and the spirit, then the aura will really, really decay. But often an unhealthy aura is also a sign of a disharmony between the incarnation and its life and past and the interests and the desires of the spirit. Um, it also has to do a little bit with society because society is often not rigged um, to satisfy the spirit as much as it is to satisfy to perpetuate itself. Um, so also society can become in a way a burden or a trap to the spirit which will lead to the spirit trying to escape from it either by guiding its body into a monastery or a way to separate itself from the pressures of society or by ultimately suicide or disincarnation um, through an accident or bad health. Um, so finding a good balance with your environment and a good relationship with your spirit are essential for your, uh, your auric health. Some other factors which are disturbing to the aura are influences which are in unnatural to it or unhealthy to it. So one are the obviously unnatural influences, which are from radiation sources, uh, which can be both magnetic radiation or uh, microwave radiation. Um, it can also be due to bad earth energies. So these are natural energies, but they can be too much. Uh, there are energies which help us to focus and to concentrate, there are energies which help us to relax, but also the aura cannot really filter them out or compensate for them. Um, so ultimately it can become a real struggle to relax if you're in a place which creates a lot of focus or to be able to focus if you're in a place which is continuously dispersing your energies. Um, another source of a lot of stress and disturbance is to be in the wrong circle because we have yeah, um, a spirit group and if we are with members of a similar spirit group and also the same thing goes for caste, uh, caste is ultimately a system to yeah, talk about um, the structure of your energy body so if you're people who have a similar structure in energy body and have a similar yeah, attraction, they're attracting the same energies to feed upon, and the same energies they are trying to banish because they're poison. Uh, this tends to be very good and healthy. So if you are with people who are, in a way, very similar to you, um, this tends to feed the aura, to strengthen the aura. And in a way, you always are, in a way, stimulating each other and building up a very strong collective field, which is also attracting positive feeding energies to you as a group. So you attract nourishing and supporting spirits to yourself. While if you're in a way alone in a group of people who are completely different and alien to you, in, you could say a, a bad environment for you, a poisonous environment where everybody is having different thoughts, different opinions and you're constantly being fed information which is to you, um, yeah, noise or pollution or poison which you're trying to push out also the aura gets very weakened, very tired. So environment is, uh, is very important and as well as taking the proper time for aura maintenance by meditating, by releasing energies which you no longer need, by processing, processing impressions which you have uh, been fed. And this is also why sleep is very essential. If you sleep in a good way, in a healthy manner, also during your sleep you can cleanse and purify the aura so that it will be fresh again in the morning. Okay, I hope these tips will help you to develop and maintain a healthy aura.